Hi, I'm Matt Shaw and welcome to my office. Smug cunt. Within these four walls, I am going to teach you all about writing your first book and publishing it. I'm going to teach you what type of story to do, whether it's a short story, a novella, a novel, even a drabble. I'm going to teach you where to find your covers, how to get your work edited, and how to publish it, be it self-publishing or traditionally publishing. I will teach you everything I know. And as you can see from the trophies on my desk, I know a fair bit. But who am I? Well, before we continue, I think we should talk about that. But don't worry, I'll keep it brief. Oh, thank fucking God for that, you boring cunt. I've been a full-time author for seven years now. I've been writing for 17 years, so as you can see, it wasn't a quick job for me. I have over 250 published stories. All of them are great, and you can find them on Amazon just by searching my name, Matt Shaw. I am both self-published and published. I have been published in this country, America, Germany, France, Japan, and Korea. Although the Koreans never actually paid me, they just robbed me instead. But that's good for you because I'm gonna teach you how to avoid pitfalls. You are gonna learn from my successes, of which there have been many, and my failures, of which there haven't been a lot. I will teach you everything I know. So sit back, relax, and listen to a master. <sighs> so, before we start, we need to find out why you're doing this. If you're doing this to get rich quick, write the book, make millions, sell the film rights. You need to quit. This isn't the industry for you. Why the fuck not? I'm not saying it can't happen, but the odds, they're stacked up against you. To make a career out of this, you need both talent and luck. If, however, you want to write because you have a passion to tell the stories, because you need to tell the stories, because if you don't, they will consume you from within. Well, carry on. And let's start by taking a look at the difference between the types of stories you can write. Short stories, novellas, novels, drabbles. You can write whatever you choose to write. Yeah, what about lists? Because I'm writing a list of all the ways I fucking hate you, cunt. A drabble is a story of 100 words exactly, not including the title. Think of a drabble as a fun writing exercise to help get you in a headspace to write something longer. It helps improve your sentence structure and gets you to tell an interesting story in a finite amount of time. I start most days with a drabble. Once upon a time, there was a writer called Matt. I really, 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 really hated him because he so clearly loves himself and then is a massive twat. I actually hope he gets hit by a bus and his insides are smeared down the length of the road and then old people come along and slip up on him yeah, because I hate them too. The reason I hate old people is because they smell and piss and constantly forget things. That's not why I hate Matt though. I hate him because he is a twat. I really hate him. There you go, fuck nuts. That was a drabble. A short story is between 5,000 and 10,000 words. Short stories are good for people who find the idea of writing a full novel or novella daunting. 
It gives you confidence, although don't be fooled. Short stories are fairly tricky to get right. The good thing about a short story, though, is if you write enough of them, you end up with a collection. And a collection you can publish. A novella's word count is anything between 10,000 and 40,000. I prefer writing novellas to anything else because you can write a great story without having to add in mindless fluff to get it up to novella length. You can tell a fantastic story which keeps the reader on the edge of the seat from page one and sustains that tension right the way through to the end. Novella. Oh, fuck, she's nice. A novel is anything over 40,000 words. You do that? Congratulations. You have a novel, you lucky dog. But which should you write? Well, that's not for you to decide. Let the story dictate how long it should be. You'll get a feel for it when you're writing. But some stories are better suited to short stories some novellas and some novels. Let the stories dictate which you write. Oh, fuck! Well, that clears it up then, you pretentious prick. If you feel like you're dragging bits out, adding information just to make the story longer for the sake of it, stop right there. Take a step back. Remember, if it's boring to write, it's boring to read. If you are a first time author, I suggest you start with short stories or novellas. It's okay. You can ask me why. Why, Matt? Let me tell you. If you start with a short story or novella, you're more inclined to actually finish it. I have a friend whose name is, well, we keep his name out of it. I have a friend. He has written a 60,000 word novel eight times. He's never released it, never done anything with it. He writes it and then he doubts himself. He gets halfway through another draft. Then he starts again and he keeps on doing this. Well, actually, he sounds like a thoroughly pleasant man and I would probably get on great with him. Start with a short story, start with a novella. They are easier to write. You will finish it. By finishing it, you will feel some confidence that you never thought you had. Build up to the novel. Be smart about it. If you want to make this work, heed my advice. Oh, hey there. Today, we're gonna to be talking about where people find their stories from. I've been writing for many years now and I picked up some tips and tricks over the years. The most obvious one is, from this day forward, you need to keep a pen and paper by the side of your bed when you go to sleep. That way, when you have the nightmare, you can wake up, you can scribble it down. You have a story. Do not rely on your memory. If you wake up with a start, oh my God, that dream was horrible. And then you go back to sleep thinking, oh, fucking write about it in the morning, no. You will forget it. Do not rely on your Spanky. The next thing you want to do is you want to read books and you want to watch films. Why? How many times have you watched a film or read a book and been disappointed by it? Yeah, I'm watching you now and I'm disappointed. Does that count, you minge? You want the characters to do something different or you want another course of action to take place. Instead, 
whatever you're reading, whatever you're watching, it goes in a direction you don't like. So take that core story, the one that's disappointed you so much, take the bits that you like from it, put it into your own story. But where you're like, I really wish the character did this, now you can write what you wanted that character to do. You can write the course of action you wanted that story to take, and by doing so, you have got your own story. Once you've done it all, once you go back to the start, you rewrite it, changing the start elements. And before you know it, you have your own original story that's loosely based on something you didn't like. Now, before I tell you this, let me tell you straight away, I'm a big fan of the film Psycho and Nick Cage's Leaving Las Vegas. However, if you go and read my best-selling book, trophies. If you go read my best-selling book, Love Life, take it all apart, you will see, actually, it's just a cross between Leaving Las Vegas and Psycho. But most people, when they read it, they won't put that together because it's completely different. I used these two as a starting point and moulded something of my own. <laughs> read magazines. Read news websites, read newspapers. Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. When I was 14 years old, I was reading about a husband and wife. It was in the local newspaper. The husband had survived an attempt on his life, not once, but eight times, because the hitman hired by his wife was useless. When I got home that night, I wrote my first screenplay dodging death, about a failed hitman who kept missing his mark. It was crap, sure, but I still wrote it. And where did the story come from? From a simple headline in the Sun newspaper. Now I'm not going to tell you how to write your story. You can write it in a third person narration or you can write it in a first person narration. The reason I'm not going to get involved is because both work. Stephen King, he writes in the third person narration style. My breakthrough novel, Sick Bastards, available now on Amazon, that was done in the first person. So clearly there is a market for both. So you tell the story your way in whichever way you are most comfortable with. My name is the devil and I am the lord of hell and I think Matt is a prick. Yeah. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a devil. He thought Matt was a prick. Yeah, yeah, they both work. The most important thing to do when telling your story, though, is find your own voice. Do not take another author and try and copy them. You do not want to be the next Stephen King. You do not want to be the next Matt Shaw. You want to be you. It's for that very reason I actually avoid reading any other horror authors, because I don't want to accidentally mimic them. I want to be known as me, not a copy of some other writer. That's personal preference though. You should read what you want and write what you want. Just be yourself. Yeah, well I look forward to reading your will when you're dead. <laughs> During the writing process, you can do it one of two ways. You can sit down and write down exactly what you want to happen in your story. You can break down every single chapter, all the character traits. You can do all this, map it out in its entirety before you even start writing. Or you can fly by the seat of your pants and just write. That's what I do. I will sit down and I will just write my story. I will let the characters lead me on the adventure that I want to tell. The only thing I will stress is very important if you go by that method is before you finish writing for the night, jot down some ideas of what you will be writing the next time you sit at your computer. The reason being, if you finish everything that you'd planned, so you're like, oh, today I'm going to write X, Y, Z and you write X, Y, Z, and then you stop for the day. The next day you come back and you'll be like, what, what, what do I write, what do I write now? 
That's where writer's block comes from. If you do X and Y the previous day, you can leave Z for the next day. So you sit down the next day, you start writing something that you already know you want to write. By the time you get to the end of that section, your brain will be in the zone and you will carry on writing what you want to write. Again, before you stop for the night, make sure you have notes jotted down for what you want to write the next day. Keep that process up, it's very important. Now there are programs out there that you can use, Grammarly being one, this helps you map everything out. Don't bother, it's a waste of money. Just use Pages or Word, and at the end of everything you're writing, that's where you just put your notes, or put it in a notepad. Keep it organized that way. It's very hard to make money by writing, so what you wanna do is try and cut all costs down wherever you can. So, notepad, notes in your Word file. Don't forget, let the type of story you're writing dictate the length. Don't plan to write a novel. Don't plan a short story or a novella. In an ideal world, you will start with a short story or a novella, but just write the story. As you're writing it, you may realize it's better suited to be a novel, in which case, don't cut it back, go for it. Let the story dictate what length book you write. Remember, if it's boring to write, it's boring to read. You're boring. <laughs> Do not bog yourself down in rewrites. You don't want to write your story and then rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it. And rewrite it. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You are just going to get bogged down. You're never going to release your work. Write your story. By all means, if you feel the need, write it again. Then give it to someone else to read. We can forever spend time polishing stories and never releasing them because every time we sit down, we'll find something else we want to change about it. At some point, you need to let it go, so don't get bogged down. And certainly, halfway through a story, never, no matter how bad it is, never quit. You will dent your confidence and it will take you longer to write a story. Sit down, write your story from start to finish. If it's crap, it's crap, it doesn't matter, you've written it. Then go back through it, rewrite it once, give it to someone else to read, go from there. Don't just keep yourself in the same circling pattern. Blah, 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 blah. It could be you get halfway through your book and you start struggling. That's fine. We are all our own worst critics. Actually, I'm your worst critic. You suck. If you start finding yourself to struggle, take a step back. Go on a website that sells pre-made book covers and find a cover for your book. D start at $30. Make the cover up yourself, so then you've got a physical thing of what it would actually look like when you finished your book. I do that a lot. Sometimes I will get the cover before I even start writing, because once I have that image, I know what the book will look like when it's finished, and I'm like, this is going to be great. I will share it to social media, and people are like, oh man, that's a, that's a real good cover. And I'm like, yeah, I know. No. Seriously, man, that's, that's deep. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, real deep. <laughs> get the cover, get more inspired to carry on writing your story. Don't quit. <laughs> Are you still struggling with writing? Then here's some quick tips, and to make it easy for myself, because I'm a little bit tipsy now, I'm gonna start reading for you. I'm a man of many tasks. I write books and I read. In fact, I'm going to read you a story now. Hi, my name's Matt Shaw and this is uh, an audition for CBBC. Is that right? CBBC. CBBC, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is my audition for Storytime. Um, I'd, I'd like to do it. I think I'll have a good voice for the children. Uh, this, is, this is an original piece of work that I'm going to be reading for you. Thank you. It's called uh, Mr. Prick and the Dirty Cunt. I'm trying not to make an ass of myself. So, Mr. Prick and a Dirty Cunt. Okay. This is Mr. Prick. Say, hello, Mr. Prick. Hello, Mr. Prick. Hello, Mr. Prick. This is Mr. Hand. Between the ages of 13 and 17 years of age, Mr. Prick and Mr. Hand were inseparable. 
Mr. Hand was an asshole. See? What an asshole. Say, you're an asshole, Mr. Hand. You're an asshole, Mr. Hand. <laughs> Mr. Prick and Mr. Hand's relationship was an abusive one. And often, Mr. Hand would strangle Mr. Prick until he foamed at the mouth. One day, Mr. Prick had had enough. What's Mr. Prick going to do? <sighs> Mr. Prick packed his bags and headed out into the big wide world to meet his new friends who wouldn't treat him as bad. <laughs> Mr. Prick dreamed of meeting little Miss Cunt, a girl he'd had missed. you fucking cunt. Mr. Prick dreamed of meeting Little Miss Cunt, a girl he'd heard Mr. Hand roleplay as. Mr. Prick had heard that Little Miss Cunt gave what they called the best cunt cuddles, and he was eager to experience one for himself. Alas, it wasn't to be. Despite hunting high and low, Mr. Prick was unable to find Little Miss Cunt. There was hope on the horizon, though, for Mr. Prick had heard rumour of an establishment where, for mere pennies, you could meet Little Miss Cunt for a one-to-one. -one. Where better place, Mr. Prick thought, to spend one's load. Mr. Prick could only afford half an hour with Little Miss Cunt, but it was the best half an hour he had ever had. The highly regarded Cunt Cuddle, although looser than he had expected, was far better than anything he had ever experienced before. Mr. Prick ended his time on a high, but there was not to be a happy end to this tragic tale. Oh no, Mr. Prick. What has happened? Within a short amount of time, Mr. Prick... <laughs> Within a short amount of time, Mr. Prick got seriously sick. Oh no, Mr. Prick. I do hope he's going to be okay, don't you, kiddies? Oh, rest in peace, Mr. Prick. The moral of this story... You don't get ill from masturbation. Right, here's some quick tips. Here's a tip. Most people stress about finding time to write. Don't. Just set yourself a goal for 3,000 words a day. So if you're writing three days a week, you want 3,000 words on each of those days. If you get more, it's a Brucey bonus. Nice to see you, to see you, nice. I don't know why I did that. If you get less, well, you're not going to get less. 3,000 minimum. You've got 9,000 words for the week if you're only doing three days a week. It's not hard. From there, what you want to do, once you're happy with your story, do not just send it off for release. Do not just send it to a publisher. Don't send it to an agent. You want to get it edited. Now, yes, a publisher will come along and they will edit your work for you. But, at the same time, if you give them an unedited manuscript and it's full of mistakes, they'll read the first couple of pages and then they will bin it. So get it edited. To find an editor, it's all about networking, which is what we're going to cover in the next video, you lucky sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, Mr. King, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, well, okay, yes. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. <laughs> um, sorry, that was my friend, uh, Wan. Um, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Oh, keep it.
we can keep it. <laughs> Have I got read the bill? <laughs> no, we can just cut it in. It's fine. <laughs> To network with people. I networked with your mum last night. with your mum last night. Don't just fall into the trap of networking with authors though. It's fine to have friends that write books as well, but if you do nothing but network with authors, all you're gonna have is social media pages filled with writers screaming, buy my book. Every post, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. None of you will really be buying one another's work. Sure, you might on one occasion, you might support them, you might buy their book, but the next time they bring one out, you probably won't. And it's just gonna be, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. You want to network with beta readers, and more importantly, your readers. Get to know your readers, let them get to know you. Not you, the writer, but you, the persona you want to put across, or even you, the real you, if you want you to be that exposed to them. Me? I act like a cunt. And believe it or not, I'm not actually a cunt in real life. I'm a really, really quiet guy. I networked with your dad too. He pulled a foreskin back and we space docked. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop! Stop! I'm gonna try that one again without the laugh. Yeah. I networked with your dad too, pulled the foreskin back, and I space docked the bastard. What? Just ask my friend. Wham King. <laughs> <laughs> Network with your readers. Let them get to know the person that they're gonna be supporting. And on that topic, when you're on social media, you don't wanna just do posts saying, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book, because it's boring. They'll just keep scrolling by. What you wanna do is you wanna do posts showing who you are as a person. Say what's gone on in your day. Tell them a funny story. Do something stupid. Upload a video of yourself making a twat of yourself. The more they like you, the more they're going to support your work. I networked with your cousins too. But how do you network though? Oh, social media. Go on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Just do a search on book groups. Going into a book group, you're going to find editors, beta readers, publishers, readers, you're going to find every person that you need to turn your book into a success. Get to know them. Don't just charge in there and ram your book down their throats like an unwanted penis, because they're not going to want to swallow it. Trust me, I've tried. On the subject of social media, don't respond to negative criticism either. With my own career on Amazon, I was getting one-star reviews. 
clearly from idiots because my books are wonderful. I made the mistake, it's a rookie mistake, I started replying to these one star reviews. I was lucky, I survived this. Other authors haven't been so lucky. You need to take a step back. And why do I know it's bad? It's because when one day I did a search on my name on Google because I'm that much of a narcissist. And what did I find? I found a forum that I'd never heard of before, but my name was there. Not just my name, it was a whole thread with people saying what a douchebag I was and linking to my responses in a one star reviews. So trust me, ignore that. Just network with people, just make friends. If someone comes on your page and is horrible to you, it's your page, block them, unfriend them. You don't need to see the comments, just get rid of them. Yeah, 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 or just wait until you're published and then send loads of videos of yourself having a wank to women when they're not suspecting it. I never did that, I promise. But I know an author who did, and let's just say it didn't end brilliantly, so don't do that. There are three ways in which you can get your work published, and I'm going to look at them each in turn. At the end, I'm going to give you the pros and cons of each one. But we're going to do it in turn and we're going to break it down into sections, because otherwise I'm going to blow your brains with too much information and just confuse you further. Before we get into that though, I will just clear something up. If you want to have a publisher, if you want to go self-published route, if you want to sell your work uh, for the film rights, get it made into a movie, you do not need an agent. Yeah, an agent can do a lot for you, but at this stage it's not necessary. You can do everything yourself. Otherwise, you're going to waste too much time trying to find an agent and you're going to have too many rejections because trust me, you will get rejections from each of the ways we're going to talk about. You're going to get rejections other than self-published because you're in control. So put the idea of an agent out of your mind at the moment if your one goal is to publish books. These are the different ways in which you can publish your books. Hello, I'm from Talking Bollocks Publications, and we think your book is great. We want to release it to paperback and Kindle for you. <laughs> we have a contract here for you to sign. Basically, you, you will get 40% of all your sales. Uh, we'll take the rest, but for that, we will get you a cover. Yeah, possibly a custom-made cover, or maybe a pre-made one from a website. We will then get your work edited. That's right, you don't have to worry about it being edited. We will then get it made into paperback and Kindle format and released across the globe for you. Just not necessarily in any bookstores, although we might, we just won't promise that, but then no one promises that anymore. Still, once your book is out, we'll be doing deals with other people for the next one, so, hmm. We will announce your book, but if you could give it a push for us and try and sell it, that would be swell. So we will publish your book, you push it. We move on to another author. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Come. Pros of a publisher, they deal with the cover, they deal with the editing. Some might even give you an advance, some might not. Cons of a publisher, they will take a cut. They don't sell your book for you. They will release it and give it a push. But after that, you need to be pushing it as well because the publisher is already looking at the next book with the next author to publish. You also don't have a say in the price or when it will be released. Hmm, Amazon KDP. So I just Google KDP and there it is. I see, so. I can upload my own book to Amazon. I mean, that's pretty cool. Oh, I'm just glad I got it edited now and found a cool cover for it. So how does it work? Oh, all right, yeah. So it's just, I just fill in the boxes. Well, that, that's nice and easy. Huh, when, when do I want to release it? Yeah, I could set it up as a pre-order if I want and log in whenever I want to see the sales and the money I'm earning. Oh, this is nice. Oh. Ooh, what should I charge? 
anything over 2.99 and I get 70% of the sales. But anything less, I get 30%. Well, well, I mean, it's straightforward. It's, it's very obvious. Oh, wait, what's this? Kindle Unlimited? Kindle Unlimited? Well, what's that? Oh, I see. So I publish my book here and I tick to join Kindle Unlimited. I join up and people can read my work as part of their subscription and I get paid a flat fee per page read. I mean, it's not a lot of money by the looks of it, but it would certainly increase my visibility and everything adds up. So, yeah. Oh, I see. So to, to be part of Kindle Unlimited, I need to be exclusive to Amazon. Well, that's fine, because I've heard that Kobo and iTunes, they don't really get the same visibility for, for people buying Kindle books. So that's fine. I can be exclusive, get my visibility up on Amazon, which is the biggest marketplace. Choose when it comes out, choose my price. Yes, yeah, it's easy. Oh, yeah. I think I'll do it. I'm going to bloody do it. Pros of being self-published. You control your book. So you decide the price it comes out at, you decide when it is released, you decide on who edits it, you decide on the cover that you give it. But all of that comes with cons. You need an editor, you need a cover. Now there's lots of sites where you can find both and I've listed loads of them on my Patreon page. So if you're not already subscribed, do subscribe to my Patreon page, put in writing advice and you'll find loads and loads of different threads on lots of different topics. Um, I'm more in tune with uh, self-published because obviously that's what I do. That's how I make my living, which is why I can sit here and recommend that you shouldn't be scared to try it. Hey, it's me. I read your book and it's great. I tell you what, I reckon I can publish that for you. I can get it out into a big wide world for you. And all you have to do, you just, you just have to give me 5,000 pounds and I'll publish your book for you. Yes, you'll be a published author. Yes, join the Vanity Publishing. Join us. Pros and cons of vanity publishing. There's no pros of vanity publishing. If you do this, you're an idiot. They are stealing your money. They are releasing your work as cheap as they can. So they'll be like, you give us 5,000 pounds, we will publish your book. So yeah, they will. They'll put it on Amazon KDP. They might make it into paperback books, all stuff you can do yourself. They'll give it a crappy little cover that they get from a pre-made website, the cheapest one they can find, no doubt. The rest of the money you've given them, they will pocket. Don't expect them to push your book. They don't care. They've got your money. You've fallen for the trap. Well done. Avoid vanity publishing. There is another way you can publish your work, which we haven't talked about yet, and that's through anthologies. Now, anthologies is just a, a big book with lots of different stories from lots of different authors. You can find these just by joining book groups, looking at publishers' websites to see if they're accepting submissions for such work. If they are, make sure they are paying you. There's a lot of anthologies out there that will say, hey, we'll publish your work, but we're not going to give you any royalties and we're not going to give you any money. Some of them may say that we'll give you royalties, but it'll be split between you and everyone else. So they'll take their cut, then whatever's left, say there's 20 authors in a book, it's going to get divided by 20 people. So get paid for your work. There's a lot of places that say, oh no, it's exposure only. No, don't do it unless you really want to. But I don't recommend doing it because you're devaluing your work immediately. So don't do it. Always get payment. Even if it's not a lot of money, any money is better than none. So yeah, get your work in an anthology and it may be seen. It may not be seen. I'm like that with anthologies. I am published in them, but I don't know how beneficial it is for finding new readers. But if you want to do it, that's another option. They sort the cover, they sort the editing, they release it, they'll be pushing it, the other authors will be pushing it, but you will still be expected to push it on social media as well. Once that's done, done. You're still a published author. 
rejection. With everything we've spoken about, again, apart from the self-published route, because you are your own boss, but anthologies, publishers, you are going to face rejection time and time again. Do not get disheartened by it just because this one person didn't like your story. It doesn't mean the next person won't love it. So just keep trying. Don't get disheartened. Don't quit. Keep writing. Keep pushing. Eventually you will find a place for your writing. And if you can't get it published anywhere, you always have self-published route to go down. There's no shame in it. And I'll keep saying that till the cows come home.